I'm going to do something a little bit different on the channel today. I'm going to go through the top five drivers, in my opinion, are the very best NASCAR drivers who never won a Cup Series title. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, comment your thoughts on this video, plus any improvements I can make on the channel. Like I mentioned, this is my own personal opinion on who are the top five drivers in NASCAR history who never won a Cup Series title. Honestly, this list was extremely hard to make. I had to make some cuts that I really didn't want to make, but I had to cut it down to five. A very difficult list to make here today. I already know there's going to be a lot of people not agreeing with my list, but let's get to it. My top five drivers without a Cup Series title. At number five, I had to pick that kid from Missouri, Cousin Carl, Concrete Carl, the guy that does the backflips, Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards is always one of the most heartbreaking NASCAR stories for me because I was such a big fan of him growing up. I remember him winning that 2007 Busch Series Championship and breaking through in the Cup Series with some wins in that Scott's number 99 Ford, especially that one at Atlanta over Jimmy Johnson. Very early on in his Cup Series career, Carl Edwards proved that he would be a championship threat every single year. And he kept up with that. Every single year that he was in the Cup Series, I considered him a legitimate championship threat. Over his career, he had 28 wins and 220 top 10s. A phenomenal career from Carl Edwards and a really great 2015 as well because he won the Coca-Cola 600 and the Southern 500 at Darlington in the same year. He finished runner-up in the championship twice, once in 2008 and once in 2011. 2011 was heartbreaking though to say the least as he tied Tony Stewart in points after the final race of the season which decided the championship for the very first time on a tiebreaker. That tiebreaker was wins. Tony Stewart had five wins on the season compared to Carl Edwards one. So Carl Edwards did not win the championship losing in a tiebreaker to one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history, Tony Stewart. And then just a few years later, Carl Edwards was once again in prime position to win the championship as running away for the 2016 NASCAR Cup Series title. And after a late caution that NASCAR later apologized for, this was in the era of NASCAR throwing debris cautions. Carl Edwards was running away with the championship and NASCAR threw out a late caution setting up a late restart. And on this late restart, you'd see Joey Logano dive to the inside of Carl Edwards right after the start finish line. Carl Edwards tries to throw a block, ends up wrecking himself off the nose of the number 22 and crashing into the inside wall. Carl Edwards in the prime of his career was this close to getting that first championship and honestly should have won it in 2016. So we all expected him to come back in 2017 and once again compete for the championship. But in that offseason, we had a surprise retirement from Carl Edwards. So that moment when we saw him hit the inside wall at Homestead Miami Speedway when he was this close to winning a championship was the last time he was in a stock car in the NASCAR Cup Series but I always was in the believement that he retired of a broken heart and definitely had 10 or 15, maybe even 20 years left in the tank. Number four on the list, I got Mark the Kid Martin. I feel like most people would have Mark Martin higher up on their list. I think the number one thing that impressed me when it came to Mark Martin was his longevity in the sport. And Mark Martin is one of those very few drivers who I think went their whole entire career as being one of the best drivers in the sport. Racing full-time in the Cup Series for 30 years and being competitive for those 30 years, even almost winning a championship in his last couple years for Hendrick Motorsports. Mark Martin would go on to finish second in points in the NASCAR Cup Series, not one, not two, 
not three, not even four, but five times. Talk about heartbreak. Mark Martin would end up retiring with 40 wins and 453 top 10s. Two of those wins coming in the Southern 500 at Darlington, plus a 2002 win in the Coca-Cola 600. And I don't think there's any driver in history that has more of a story of second than Mark Martin. Like I mentioned, he finished second in points five times. He also had that really epic moment in the Daytona 500 years ago when Kevin Harvick won the Daytona 500, just edging out Mark Martin in that U.S. Army Chevrolet. He's also considered by many to not be the best, but the second best Bush Series driver in history with 49 wins. Most people would consider the best to be Kyle Busch. And now we're on to number three, and I feel like most people would not have this driver on their top five list. Some might not even have him on their top 10 list. But this driver passed away way too soon, and this driver was definitely on to amazing, amazing things. And I'm, of course, talking about the coolest guy in the history of everything, Tim Richmond. This guy was cooler than cool. Tim Richmond had so much personality, so much style, but even more than that, he probably was the most skillful race car driver of his time. Tim Richmond, of course, being one of the very first drivers making the move from open wheel racing to stock cars. Racing in the Indy 500 a couple times in the early 80s, eventually making that jump to NASCAR. And honestly, that was the smartest career decision of his life. Was not a bad open wheel racer, but just something about those stock cars just really agreed with his driving style. As in the 80s, I would consider him probably the best road course racer of the 80s was probably the first really talented NASCAR driver at road courses. Tim Richmond, of course, would not have a lot of the stats that a lot of drivers on this list have. Once Tim Richmond's career was over with, he finished with 13 wins and 78 top 10s. But in 1986, he would really set the NASCAR world on fire as he won seven times during that Cup Series season, including a win at Darlington in the Southern 500. But then in the offseason of 1986, heading into 1987, he would become ill. A lot of people did not know of his illness and why he was sick at the time. He would end up missing the beginning portion of the 1987 season. But then when he did come back, he won two more races, giving him nine wins in two seasons. He would end up leaving Hendrick Motorsports at the end of the 87 season, looking to get back into the sport in 1988. A lot of difficult things when it comes to drug testing and stuff like that and his medical testing during that time affected his comeback and even had legal issues potentially as well. All that talk is for another video on another day. But unfortunately, Tim Richmond was not able to make that comeback in 1988 and make a Cup Series start, even though he's shown to be potentially one of the best up-and-coming racers in NASCAR. August 13th, 1989. As on this day, we lost the life of Tim Richmond. Tim Richmond was only 34 when he passed away. Like I mentioned, only had 13 wins to his name at the time. It was proven in that 1986 season and when he was able to come back for a few races in 1987 that this driver was going to do amazing things in the Cup Series. Well, unfortunately, his life was cut short by AIDS. It wasn't known at the time, but he passed away early due to AIDS. Like I mentioned, I don't think a lot of people would have him on their top five or even their top ten purely because of stats. But I'm looking at driver skill, and if we're looking at pure driver skill, I probably would have put him at number one because he proved in that very short time that he was something really special and could have potentially been one of the greatest drivers who ever lived could have even been a multi-time champion. But I guess we'll never know, and Tim Richmond's legacy continues to live on as they even sell his gear at the racetrack right now in those NASCAR Classics hauler. Now we're on to number two, and this is one of the most legendary, most well-known figures in the history of our sport. This figure even had a movie based on his life called The Last American Hero, 
And I'm, of course, talking about Junior Johnson. In the early days of NASCAR, Junior Johnson was the epitome. He was NASCAR in those early days. A lot of people point at Junior Johnson as one of the smartest and most innovative people in NASCAR history. He's also considered to be one of the best team owners in NASCAR history and drivers. But Junior Johnson is from the old days of NASCAR when they were running moonshine, a bunch of moonshiners out there. He was that. If you think about it, back then, Junior Johnson was just a good old Southern boy who loved himself some moonshine and racing cars. But all those factors turned into something bigger, making him one of the biggest figures and most well-known people in the history of NASCAR. Junior Johnson would end up retiring with 50 wins and 148 top 10s, including a 1960 Daytona 500 win. I honestly find it kind of insane that Junior Johnson never won a championship as a driver. He ended up being a six-time champion as a team owner, but never won one as a driver, and I feel like that is just crazy. There's no one in that time that knew how to work on cars like he did. He was just such a smart and innovative guy. But one of the reasons I have him on this list, not just because of his stats, but because if there was no Junior Johnson, NASCAR wouldn't be at all like it is today. Junior Johnson helped shape the sport into what it is today. And for that, I'm internally grateful. Now I'm gonna mention just a couple of honorable mentions. One driver is Ricky Rudd. I really badly wanted to put Ricky Rudd on this list. He's one of my personal favorite drivers of all time. I'd probably put him in my top 10 favorite drivers of all time. But like I said, this list was incredibly hard to make. But Ricky Rudd's longevity in the sport is very impressive, very comparable to a Mark Martin or a Jeff Gordon with how long they were able to be competitive in the sport. Another driver I really thought of including in this list was Davey Allison. Davey Allison, like Tim Richmond, ended up passing away too soon and could have been something so much bigger than what he was. Davey Allison was a proven winner, even facing hardships of himself, including injuries, was a driver that unfortunately passed away too soon now on to number one y'all know what i'm gonna say most of you are probably not gonna be happy about it because you don't like this guy but i'm at the pick dennis the menace denny hamlin is the greatest driver in nascar history who has never won a cup series championship denny hamlin winning the rookie of the year in 2006 has been a championship threat every year of his career even in 2006, going into that final race at Homestead, he was eligible to still win the championship going into that final race. He was one of the very few drivers that still had a chance at winning that 2006 title. Denny Hamlin, of course, has been very close to winning the championship on multiple occasions as he's been to three championship fours and also has a runner-up finish in the championship in 2010. So these stats are as of April 22nd, of 2024 so these stats could potentially be different when you're looking at this video but at the moment Denny Hamlin has 53 wins and 343 top 10s and included in those wins is three Daytona 500 championships which is fantastic puts him in elite company plus a 2022 Coca-Cola 600 win there's been talks over the years, will Denny Hamlin ever get that championship? He's getting into the later stages of his career. But we've seen so far in the 2024 season that Denny Hamlin is still clearly a championship threat. Honestly, I don't really like comparing sports, but what Denny Hamlin's going through right now reminds me a lot of years ago before LeBron James got his ring. I remember a lot of people on social media, a lot of people on TV, a lot of personalities were really giving LeBron James a hard time and honestly making fun of LeBron James not getting a title yet. I see a lot of the same things with Denny Hamlin. I'm not saying Denny Hamlin's the LeBron James of NASCAR. Don't get that misconstrued. He's not. But Denny Hamlin is definitely one of the best NASCAR drivers ever, and in my opinion, is the best driver who has never won a cup series title if you asked me a couple years ago what do i think about denny hamlin winning a title i would have said it's a matter of time before he wins that title and now i have to say he's running out of time 
Denny Hamlin, I think, has maybe five, six, maybe seven more good years left. He still has a couple of opportunities to get that championship. But like I said, he's running out of time. I'm hoping next year I can remake this list and not include Denny Hamlin on it. But that's my list for the top five best NASCAR drivers who've never won a Cup Series title. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What did you think of my list? Give me your own top five. Who do you think are the top five greatest Cup Series drivers to never win a title? But that'll do it for this video. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.